Network Dojo. Hey, Jeff Rensink here from Network Dojo, and this video is gonna be an overview of the Enterprise Core Exam from Cisco number 350-401. So first of all, uh, what is the Encore or Enterprise Core exam and why should you care? Well, this is a professional level Cisco written exam and the little asterisk next to the professional level is just because not only is it valid for professional level certifications, it's also valid for expert level lab attempts as well. And so it's sort of this almost in between uh, type of an exam, but it being a required exam for the professional level certifications, I call it a professional level exam. There's kind of three main use cases that you're gonna use this exam for. Number one, it is a required exam to achieve the CCNP Enterprise certification. You have to pass two exams to get that certification. This is the required exam, and then you have an, uh, a choice of optional uh, concentration exams on top of it. It is a required exam to take the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure or CCIE Enterprise Wireless Lab exam. So if you have uh, hopes to take the lab exam for either one of those two tracks. This is the qualifying written exam that allows you to schedule the lab exam. And finally, we can use this for recertifying existing certifications. It would be worth 80 points if you pass this exam. So that would be enough to single-handedly recertify any CCNA or CCNP level certification. CCNA, I believe, needs 40 points. Um, 30 or 40 points, CCNP needs 80 points, so you're good for all of those levels by just passing one exam. And if you're looking to recertify a CCIE level certification, um, it gets you 80 out of your 120 points that you need, leaving only 40 more points by passing some other exam or continuing education credits or, or whatever you need. So it's a really great exam to do a lot of great things. So some details about this exam. So this is a proctored exam. You will be either attending a physical location with the proctor or going through the on-view online proctored certification process. Either way, you're being watched. Uh, the cost is $400 US. I believe this is the case um, everywhere in the world. You'll be given two full hours to complete the exam. Now, Cisco does not publish the number of questions and the number of questions in your exam could be slightly different. So it's not like there's always X amount of questions every single time. But combing through the internet and based off of my own personal experience, a range of somewhere between 100 to 105 seems to be pr a pretty common number range there. There is also no advertised passing score. When you sit down to take the exam, you will be told what the passing score for your particular exam is. But again, combing through the internet, personal experience, 825 seems to be a pretty common number. What does that mean? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an estimate uh, a little bit later because that's just a sort of an arbitrary number at this point, right? Now, once you do pass the Enterprise Core exam, that exam will be valid for three years to either help you achieve the CCNP Enterprise certification or allow you to take the CCIE Enterprise infrastructure or uh, CCIE Enterprise wireless labs. You get three full years of this helping you out for either one of those two use cases. All of the questions that you're going to get inside the Enterprise Core exam are non-interactive in that there is no simulation type exams. You're never typing in answers or you know trying to configure anything yourself in a GUI or, or something like that. Um, everything is going to be either multiple choice with one single answer allowed, and usually there's um, if you've ever taken a Cisco exam, you kind of know this. There's usually four answers to choose from more often than not. You're going to choose one or you got the multiple choice, multiple answer, where there's, again, very often you have four possible answers to choose from, and they'll tell you how many correct answers there are to select. It's probably two, maybe it's three, but on a multi-answer with only four possible solutions, you're not usually choosing too much more than two. And then we have uh, drag and drops, and those can come in many uh, different formats. You know, for instance, like a categorization uh, type format, you might, uh, you know, drag over all things that describe this protocol or have to do with this protocol. Or it could be um, like an order type of thing. You know, rearrange these things in a particular order. 
you know, um, you know, prioritization type order would be a good example of that. And there's lots of places where prioritization can come into play. Um, I've even seen things like, uh, hey, drag and drop some keywords into commands. And so, you know, maybe there's a, a number of lines of configurations and, you know, there's some blank spots in the lines and you just need to take some of the keywords that you find down below, choose appropriate ones and put them in the appropriate spots in the command. So lots of possible ways that they can do drag and drop, but that's, that is the type of a question that you're going to go ahead and see. As far as the blueprint goes, why don't we go ahead and jump on that here? So here we have um, the, the blueprint from Cisco. If you go to learningnetwork.cisco.com, um, once you're in here, simply go under communities and we would look for, not communities, I'm sorry, uh, certifications. And you wanna see the CCNP Enterprise. And from here, it's gonna show you all of the possible exams that go into this certification. What we're looking at is right up at the top. You go into exam topics. And then inside here, you can either look at it within here, expanding out, or you can download a PDF right from there. So we can see we have six overall sections. And there's a weighting on each section. So you can kind of see, okay, well, in the grand scheme of the exams, you know, expect 15% to, to do with automation. Expect 20% to do with security. So that's the weighting of those. And then they dig into individual uh, topics here. So I'm not going to go ahead and just read through everything. But one thing I do want to point out, as you look through the blueprints here, and maybe you hadn't really paid attention if you've taken other Cisco exams, but notice there's always like a verb that starts things off. Explain, analyze, differentiate. If I come down here, configure. What else? Troubleshoot. So you, you'll see these different verbs. And when you look at the verbs, it kind of gives you an idea of, okay, do I just need ge general information about these different topics? I call it these uh, like trivia related information. They're kind of just little facts that you memorize and then you can use those facts to answer questions. Or are you actually gonna need to know how to configure something, how to verify something, what can go right, what can go wrong with those? And, that, and the keywords here will often tell you the types of information that you're gonna need to know. So for instance, if you see configure, not only do you need to know per se what VRFs are, what GRE and IP tunneling, or sorry, IPsec tunneling looks like, you're gonna need to know some of the configs that go along with it. And oftentimes if, if there's config, there's also verify that goes along with that as well. So yes, you're not applying configurations in the exam, but absolutely they can show you configurations and you either need to understand, okay, well, based off of this configuration, this is what I expect to be happening. Or maybe it's uh, uh, which one of these configurations is correct. So that'll kind of identify the type of knowledge you need for each of the different uh, topics that show up underneath this list here. So absolutely uh, give it a read through and that's gonna give you a really good uh, idea about the types of things you're gonna need to know and what types of knowledge for those specific things you need to know for the exam. So some of my observations um, from having taken the exam, I took the exam um, in August, 2021, I believe was the, the month that I took this exam. It wasn't all that long ago for me at the moment. Um, so one, uh, they did a decent job at spreading out questions across um, the blueprint sections based on those weightings. So indeed, when you look at the weightings of the different uh, six high level sections, I feel like there was a, a reasonably um, accurate percentage of questions in each one of those uh, high level sections. I would also say that they did a pretty decent job at having questions addressing most of the individual topics within the sections. And so uh, it's not like you are going to you know, come in here and be like, okay, well, there's 10% uh, of this has to do with virtualization, but um, you know, if there's a little over 100 questions, let's just say that there's 100 questions. It's not like they did nine questions on this one subtopic and then there was one question about something else. They did a fairly good job at you know making sure that there was questions about you know most each individual thing going down the list here. So um, expect to see most every blueprint topic probably represented by one potentially two or three, just depending on uh, the topic and if it had subtopics or whatever. Um, expect to see at least a question about almost every last bullet point on this list here. I would say for most people, time is not gonna be an issue. Now we have a 220 minutes, we have a low number of 100, you know, 100 to 105 type questions. 
you have over a minute for each individual question. And since you're not doing configurations, you know, some questions might take a little bit longer because you are having to analyze, you know, maybe a diagram, some configuration, maybe some uh, code or, or something like that on some of the automation type questions. Sure. But then again, some of the questions are, you know, one or two sentences, pretty obvious type, uh, you know, you either know the answer or you don't. You can move on. And so it, I would say it's probably pretty rare that you're going to run out of time. I, um, uh, I wasn't able to complete <laughs> the exam because I was doing the online version of the exam and I ran into technical issues and my exam actually ended with uh, about 20 questions left to go. Although surprisingly enough, I still answered enough right to, to pass the exam. Um, so I didn't actually get to go all the way to the end of the exam. But at that mark, I had basically almost a full hour left at the end. So time absolutely was never going to be a problem for me. And I don't think most people will have a problem with time. Uh, a few of the negatives with the exam. I mean, not everything's roses, right? So most of the the issues in the exam are, are fairly common across most every Cisco written exam, if you've ever taken one in the past. There's always going to be a few questions that could have been written better, right? And oftentimes, like the, the deeper knowledge you have about something, sometimes the, the more you realize it's okay, well, they need to fill in a few more gaps for me to accurately choose between a few of these topics. You can usually assume what it is that they're getting at and, and probably make the correct choice. But uh, sometimes, you know, you just realize, hey, you know, this, this could have been written a little bit better. Um, I personally question the importance of the automation section of the exam. So what's in the automation section of the exam? Uh, that's section six. And so that's things like uh, getting into uh, understanding Python scripts, uh, JSON encoding, uh, Yang, APIs are in here. Um, uh, some of the stuff I, I, I think is completely fine, like embedded event manager, cool, understanding agent and agent list orchestration tools. Um, you know, some of this is appropriately high level enough. Some of this gets maybe a little bit more detailed. And not to say that these aren't important things in a network. I mean, this is where things are, are moving to. Automation is becoming a more important thing. It's just that most, uh, if I understand, you know, me talking to people, a lot of the automation that we tend to do is just sort of baked into the tools that we purchase. It's not like we are creating Python scripts most of the time, or we are making our own specific AP, API calls analyzing the results and then programming them to, to spit the results into something else. It's just the tools that we, we tend to use did this, did the work for that for us. And we just get this nice, cool gooey front end to use. And we, have, we get the easy button and a lot of this stuff is really kind of under the hood type stuff. And so while sure, um, for a, a small subset of people, they might actually dig deep enough into this, but I think this is just kind of an overall push that Cisco is having, I think kind of across most all of their tracks where they're trying to uh, bring in more of this automation, uh, this, um, you know, the software scriptability API type stuff um, across everywhere. And so I understand it. I just didn't feel like it was um, maybe the most important thing that we need to be, you know, digging deeper into, but uh, other people might disagree. And then the last thing is uh, I sometimes wonder why certain minor topics get um, multiple questions every once in a while. You know, you're just like, okay, uh, there's a question about that. Okay, whatever. There's another question about that. There's another question about that. What in the world? Why are they harping on this particular thing that really doesn't seem to be super important as far as, you know, being a network engineer compared to some of the other things I'm used to seeing and, and getting questions on. But again, you know, it could just be my perception Maybe they're just hitting on a topic that I don't feel is important, but, um, you know, uh, other people might be feeling the same thing too, but it is what it is. And it's not going to be enough to, uh, to cause you to fail the lab if you're adequately prepared on some of the other more important topics, I would say. Uh, in terms of passing the exam, so that 825, uh, score, you know, again, what does that really mean? Well, technically uh, the score ranges, if I understand it right, are from 300 to 1000. It's, it's an odd uh, score range, I know. But in terms of how many, what percent do you need to answer correctly? I think that's a more applicable number that people would care about. I would say low 70% correct seems to allow for a passing score because that's what I ended up having in my score report. Again, um, I, I missed out on like 20 whole questions that I didn't get to answer. So 
I'm just assuming they counted all those wrong, which fair enough. But um, yeah, so I think my if I take the the percentages and multiply it by the weightings of the different sections, and um, it ended up at like seventy two percent, and so uh, low seventy percent, um, at least from in my experience, was an acceptable passing score. So use that uh, how you will. Um, you'll see many questions that have supporting diagrams. So get very comfortable just being able to analyze diagrams. And oftentimes the diagrams are not all that complex, but you know, showing you know a handful of switches, a handful of routers, and how they're connected, or you know, dying, diagramming out some routing protocols. Like say if it was OSPF, you know, maybe you're seeing a few different areas. If it's BGP, maybe you're seeing a couple different autonomous systems. You know, things like that. And being able to uh, use that information as you analyze, um, you know, what which answers are correct, which answers are not. Be very comfortable looking at configurations. You know, when we looked at the bl the blueprint, um, you know, all those things that talked about configure, um, you know, and I have that on the last blueprint, you know, construct, verify, diagnose, troubleshoot, interpret. Those are the types of things that you might need to be able to look at a piece of configuration and understand, you know, is that configuration correct? Is there a part of it that's causing a problem? What is that configuration attempting to accomplish so that I can properly answer questions for that? Um, and then sometimes it might be, you know, output like verification commands, logs, um, that type of stuff. You know, just again, just being able to understand those types of things, you know, not just factoids about stuff, but actually real world configurations, verifications, logs to, uh, again, answer questions effectively. Uh, getting hands-on with topics, I think, can definitely directly benefit your learning experience. There's, um, I don't know, maybe it's like about 50, 60%, I would say, of the questions. I think uh, your ability to answer them could be enhanced by having some hands-on practice with those particular technologies. And so I'm not saying that you have to do hands-on practice. You know, if you're watching videos that show how to configure things, show how to verify things, common logs, that type of stuff. Sure, you can just kind of remember uh, what those things are. And even though you didn't configure it yourself, when you're presented with that type of information, you can probably rem remember it enough to answer enough questions to pass. But doing the hands-on practice yourself is really going to help lock that information in and just make it way easier to um to recall that information and identify what it is that they're showing you compared to having only just watched or read about the information there. So if you are interested in studying for the Enterprise Core exam, Network Dojo is definitely here to help you out. At the moment of this recording, we are underway creating materials right now, but expect those to be available over the course of October and November 2021, starting with the videos and quizzes and then building on top of that. But what are we going to be having here? The, the idea is to be effectively a one-stop shop for all of your study needs. You don't have to be, you know, grabbing materials from there, um, you know, many different places. You can kind of come here, get everything you need to know to pass the exam um, in one system effectively. So absolutely at the forefront is a very robust video series going through all the different topics that you need to know. Quizzers to help sort of lock that information in, gauge if you're remembering things appropriately. We'll have a workbook to give you guided hands-on practice. If you do want to do hands-on practice type studies, really lock that stuff in well. We'll have a study plan for you to follow so you're not having to figure everything out on your own. Um, you've got all these materials. We'll tell you how to use it and how to work your way through it to the best effect. And finally, uh, a community chat server if you want that sort of group feel where you can come in, you can ask questions, you can find study partners, just sort of be a part of a community of other people also working their way for, through the same exam as you. So if any of that sounds interesting, come check us out, uh, networkdojo.com. And if you are going to be going for that enterprise exam, we wish you absolutely the best of luck.